the episode before we ran the perimeter was called The Calm Before the Storm. Should we call this one now The Calm After the Storm? I don't know. <laughs> it definitely was a crazy storm and it really, 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 really feels good to look at our completed um, billboard here, right? Our task list. Um, and it is actually completed. You know, I have a lot of beacons, right? I told you, got a good deal with Impulse. Uh, he gave me 30 beacons and said, you can have the beacons for free if you buy all the beacon bases for that in emeralds. And I buy, bought like a ton of emeralds already, right? And um, yeah, we're getting close to paying that off. So technically beacons was already also completed, but uh, let's face it, so far we didn't need them much. Um, yeah. It was an absolute insane grind. And one thing's for sure in Minecraft, you gotta, you know, make sure you don't go crazy. Even if you feel super motivated, you cannot burn yourself out, right? It can happen in Minecraft. Uh, still, you know, you just don't, don't have the energy to play if you do a lot of crazy stuff all the time. So we always need to go up and down, you know, up and down, chill a little bit. So we're not gonna do crazy world eatering today. <laughs> But, you know, <laughs> that doesn't mean it's not going to be crazy in other ways. Uh, yeah, it's the Hermitcraft server after all. But before we continue, of course, uh, big shout outs to the fan artist of today on the thumbnail and here on the screen. Peanut butter, to butter, peanut butter, <laughs> peanut butter 255. Thank you so much. All the links uh, necessary in the video description. Make sure to support our amazing fan artist community. They make this whole journey uh, 10 times better. It's just amazing. And yeah, amazing pick commemor commemorating how the world eater chew was chewing through this terrain here. And um, yeah, it was quite interesting. For example, on the Reddit, let me pop down. Where's my bed? Oh yeah, I have it over there. Um, on the Reddit, uh, people were posting about um, the scale of the World Eater and uh, people not really grasping it because it was not really fully rendered. Well, look at that. One second, options, video settings. Ba -ba -bum. Let's crank that bad boy up to 32. I installed Bobby. It's a fabric mod that pretty much stores chunks outside the server's render distance. Um, in your memory and then makes it possible to um, you know, at least simulate a higher render distance. Of course, these chunks outside the 16 block server render distance wouldn't update if I don't fly there and go there uh, automatically. But you know, still, um, it helps us a lot to grasp what is going on here with the perimeter. And yeah, let's head over. Let's head over to where we're gonna work today a lot at our main base entrance here check that out oh my god and it's already uh, it's bad place uh, i haven't lit it up at all i just wanted to grab my bed actually we can come back here later <laughs> but you know <laughs> yeah i'm gonna sleep right away so we can see it at daytime but i think it looks particularly cool with all the lava around still and you know then you can see also the lush caves in the walls right that have have um, glow berries and stuff a bit lit up and partially scar and caving the cut geode there shimmering a bit in the night but look at that we can actually see the full perimeter it's crazy let's go up and then we can use camera account to look downwards it's really cool <laughs> so yeah um, we will use Bobby not always here and there but I think you know for admiring the perimeter it's a perfect mod <laughs> it was created just for us <laughs> for this moment <laughs> obviously not but you know <laughs> okay let's use the cam account fly up real quick here check this out this gives us a really nice clear view of everything that was going on we can see the flattened out area there i started with that just digging around a bit right main base over there mumbo's uh um, slime farm wannabe <laughs> uh, yeah world eater there there was so many 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 great suggestions um, um, about things we could do in here we're gonna develop everything together step by step and make s smooth decisions for example there's a debate right now about the floor right should we what should we do with the floor should we blast it all out uh, so only bedrock is exposed and then fill all the gaps in with glass you have to see we're talking about huge dimensions here now you can see it better right um, 
like if we'd fill in everything here that would be about 280,000 glass blocks we have to use <laughs> so you know whenever we make decisions about the uh, uh, perimeter here we need to think massive huge scale there is interesting concepts there's wall printers for certain patterns there's floor printers available insane machines i looked at some over the past few days together with the hive mind uh, crazy stuff can be done but we got to be smart with it you know with such a huge scale large scale project making this whole thing look epic we got to be smart because every wrong decision could mean you know hours and hours wasted and you have to tear something down and you name it so first thing we need to install certain farms in the in this in the world here, here in the world in the perimeter right right here in the center roughly there will be a drowned farm low um, y values and therefore it will be super efficient we will uh, outperform whatever is going on on the server by a magnitude of you know a lot <laughs> so a uh, super high efficient copper farm here we will use tons of copper in our builds i have crazy plans um, for what we do around here um, then um, of course we might have to think about a slime farm somewhere the slime uh, spawning in the yeah the perimeter is uh, just outrageous and let me get my rockets here is, you know some of my digging endeavor let's go down there i mean yeah you'll see in a short amount of time we have like insane amount <laughs> amounts of slime around us right so here's some slime chunks i have to check but you know the slimes are everywhere and um yeah we quickly reach mob cap just with slime here you know it was the biggest pain in the butt digging around here like you have slime spawning on you like non-stop <laughs> uh, it's crazy the whole perimeter is filled with slime in a short time so let's just walk around a bit but it's cool how we can see it now as well from down here right with the 32 block <laughs> render distance and yeah slime party over there <laughs> yeah and behind us and over there and everywhere it's just insane never seen so many slimes in, uh, at the same time and you you know <laughs> We should hack them all into small ones and then have a huge army of slime following in us. <laughs> Maybe we can let them spawn and, uh, you know, try to reach mob cap. It should, be, it should look funny. I'll try maybe later. So, yeah. So, slime farm is definitely a good call. Then I was thinking in one corner we put a gunpowder farm as well. We just have to do smart placement. We have a huge area here, so if we position our player well, we can still get really efficient farms running just by positioning us at different locations, by maybe turning off certain farms. The drowned farm design we have in mind right now cannot really be turned off. So we might have to look into that a little bit and revise it. We will see. Um, but you know, so first we need to figure out what farms are we gonna put here and where. When we have those in, then we can also actually think about a floor pattern. Because what we wanna do is, you know, like, build the floor pattern, uh, have it evolving from or around our farm setups, right? Because if we put a regular floor pattern in here and then have our farm sitting at random spots, it uh, might look weird, right? Breaking the pattern. So ideally, we have the farms in place, connect the farms with uh, certain uh, yeah, patterns or something, and then to weave it out from there. Maybe giant uh, pixel art, we don't know yet. Right, there is uh, plenty, plenty of options for us um, to go for. We might end up having to co cover everything with glass. Then another thing <laughs> that was debated as well is um, bedrock removal. I'm really thinking just for the technical challenge, there should be some bedrock removal going on. I don't want to promise it yet. I have, look, I have also looked in a few machines that look really promising and would be cool to show off and show you guys large scale bedrock breaking. Um, it's pretty cool how advanced its technology is these days as well. And I was thinking maybe, you know, for the centralized um, um, drowned farm that will be sitting around here somewhere, right? Um, it is probably two by six chunks, maybe a little bit bigger. And I could actually try to break out that section to sink down the drowned farm to squeeze out a, a few more percentages, which is not really necessary, to, um, but it would be cool to have a giant void hole here. 
you know, imagine how many deaths would appear if you have such a giant void hole. Remember, Botim Hole, it was a pretty small bedrock hole. You can never let Scar close to here. Talking about letting people not cl uh, close to here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, looks like Green was stuck in my hole here. I um, was trying to look around how he got out. Um, he fell into here in his last episode <laughs> and had no rockets. So I have no idea. I was looking, you know, maybe he pillared up somewhere or climbed up. If this looks man, it's just falling gravel. I haven't found a pillar. I have no idea how he made it out of here. Potentially he could have also killed himself, <coughs> you know, put his stuff in endo chest and then just teleported out this way. I haven't seen evidence of him climbing out, <laughs> but it was hilarious. Um, talking about more hilarious stuff. Yeah. Uh, the spawn area. Let's fly over there actually with our massive render distance. So far, I mean, everything runs pretty smooth. You can definitely see the computer is, um, you know, grinding a little bit more with the huge render distance. And maybe the chunk loading is a bit slower. Probably good that we have nobody on right now, sides of Iskal AFK. And that helps with the chunk loading and, uh, on the server. Okay, yeah, let's check it out. <laughs> really? Really? What? Why is this thing... What? <laughs> What's going on? People are cheating! You can't start from the top! <sighs> that was green, I saw his video. And whoa! Holy moly, the lock factory is insane. Let's load in more chunks, then we can see more stuff here at spawn at once. So somebody posted on Reddit, you know, how big the perimeter is in comparison to spawn town here. And pretty much everything you see here in spawn town easily fits inside the perimeter. <laughs> Gives you another idea about scale. But look at that with the render distance. This is so cool. Let's... Um, wait, what is going... I'm... This whole... So, some... Some of the pillars were like disqualified for not being valid. See, that's what I'm saying. It was a, a diamond race here, not random blocks you can find anywhere. Race, but bro, what did Ker this Keralis? It's a huge sawmill. I think that's the future mega lock shop they've been working on. Bro, this is it's epic and it's so cool how far we can see from here. Kraken. Yeah, we missed we missed the game, man. I was so busy with the perimeter. XB had a great game going on, you know, diving through the rings, trying to get max score. Um, but yeah, it's already over the deadline, I think. I have to check, but I'm pretty sure. But yeah, what's with the diamond situation? Okay, how tall is this? 204. <laughs> and scars crashed into the ground. Wow. What is this diamond pillar though? Now all of a sudden, we have a new contender. Derpy googly eyes <laughs> with check mark went over there. Wait, is this Cup's pillar and he just moved it? How tall are, are we now? See, this doesn't count. <laughs> they really want to mess with the Deep Slate Diamond Lord or what? Really? Come on, man. I'm not gonna break these. It's annoying. It's gonna take forever. We're just gonna give him a slow burn, a slow death. I have so many diamond ores now. <laughs> it's pretty much an infinite supply. We're gonna slowly grind them down. 205. Wait, no. Let's do a looking at. Looking at 204. And what was this? 205? Or what? One block? Or are we same height at the moment? We just have to grab a few diamonds and top this okay 204 looking at 24 same height <laughs> i mean you know to extra flex we should not straighten our uh, pillar and just you know go further then we definitely have the edge later on and who says we cannot go underground and connect to bedrock in the end they messed with the wrong man you know i was just casually building my pillar here but this Look at how ugly it looks. Let's see how deep. How deep is this sunk in? <laughs> is this Cup's pillow? Let's confirm. Yes. Bro. I think that is legit. But it's pretty much... 
it's a, that's hard, gonna be hard to beat. <laughs> oh, talking about diamonds. Wait a minute. I haven't checked my my profits in a while. Yeah, and also I think um, oh, I think we had um, wait, and the boardwalk was extended. Bro, there's so much stuff going on. Is there a ro road already going on? Oh yeah, and the hermit dares. Oh man, yeah. See, like if you if you hardcore perimeter digging, yet you miss out on everything. I need to catch up on so many things. We need to get into the mix here. Wait, let's sign up for this. We just need to put our head down. We still got our head from um, you know when we were doing Gary. So. Is there even space? Oh yeah. Do people do special things for their... I mean, we can take this one, but we don't want to have a stone pillar. Okay, let's use a red deep slate redstone ore. That fits well with us. Yeah. Okay, we put that here. Let's get into this. It's pretty simple, pretty much. You now, if you participate, you can be dare to do something really stupid. <laughs> Remember when when Stress, the genius, how I only refer to her now, solved the impossible Gary riddle? She had a mumbo skin on. That was a dare by Iskal. And there's a dare stick in play. You know, if you get hit by the dare stick, whomever was dared before can dare you. So, you know, uh, good fun and shenanigans. We need to get into that. That is a given. All right. Um, so next up, next stop, our shop. Yeah, here you can see, yeah, the, the frames are a bit more choppy here over at, at the shopping district, especially now rendering 32 chunks in, kind of. <laughs> yeah, I think that we missed the time window there, I think. Unfortunately. There was a, yeah... Yeah, unfortunately. Sorry, I'm sorry, XP crafted. But hey, maybe we can give it a, a try later on, you know, out of competition, pretty much. But there was huge prizes to be had. Let's see how the sa- Ooh! Whoa, 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 whoa. Huh. Yo! We sold out! We need to refill! Nobody told me! Oh my god, business is booming! Wait. Okay. This is amazing. We need to buy copper today. Oh. All right, all right. Let's go. Dudes. Bro, we're selling. Let's grab. 18, 19. Oh, man. I'm feeling this. Like, this is the most successful shop ownage I ever had. Especially the sand. See, I told you guys. Eventually, we'll get to them. We have a lot of sand stored down below, but we might need to have to go sand digging. And I need sand for my building project today. Sand it is, we need to, uh, you know, poppy it. Holy m we sold out. I never sold out a shop ever. Like, in my Hermitcraft history. We always had cool shop ideas, but I never really took off, because we were always distracted. <laughs> you know, I'm getting my businessman on this season. Look at this riches. This is over a Like... Brothers and sisters, we made like riches. Holy moly, that's one and a half stacks of diamonds made. Gonna spend it all on copper. <laughs> but hey, this is amazing. I'm I'm stoked. Okay, um, um, refill time. Man, using Bobby really, really gives you a different idea of how things are situated here on the server and how close things actually are. I was not aware of that, to be really honest. You fly back and forth, but you don't realize it. Look at that. I mean, over there we can see Mambo's Vault. There is Green's Rock. There's the perimeter. I mean, it's literally right next to each other. And there on the horizon, you know, Scar will build, uh, start his mega project. I mean, that's crazy. I never realized it was that close. It's pretty much, I guess, just out of render distance. Normal render distance. <laughs> well, 
As you saw back there, I was laying out some copper and you saw I've been chased around by like a million slime. Uh, quite funny. <laughs> Uh, the slime spawning here and here we go again yeah I'm gonna need copper and letting some uh, new patches here age uh, but I got enough for now just creating some more smooth sandstone because today we actually want to start with the first bit of our yeah what people call mega bases these days I just call it form follows function this thing's gonna be cool <laughs> but yeah we had this structure here last episode and now we need to 3 d it to make the vision of the Hall of Goats a reality. So let's go! This is really starting to look cool. Oh man. Yeah. Epic. Look at it from on top, right? We just keep the shape we laid out on the ground with the wool and just raise the walls in 3D, fight it like that. And that already gives it a super interesting shape. This will be crazy. Now we need to look into lines. I mean, I've been working on this design concept for weeks now with Jeromus. We had a bunch of prototypes and in the end we settled for this look now. Um, we found quite some inspiration in all kinds of architecture that really exists and kind of merged it all together. And yeah, we want to continue with the theme we had going on. It's kind of eco, steampunk, green uh, energy meets uh, modern architecture style and I think we will nail it with this and also epicosity because this is the hall of the goats we also get an, in enough height in there later let's go inside real quick so we can grasp the dimensions there will be a double doors here and here on the flanks and then you come into the hall and yeah, you know walk in here and yeah, it will be Pretty epic. Continues back here then. Yeah. I'm pretty pleased with all that. Yeah, I'm pretty pleased. Now, the copper comes in play though. We need to uh, make clear lines here. In a complicated shape building, uh, which has a lot of angles and twists and turns like this, it is really important to make sure to have clear lines. So let's get to that. Man, <laughs> that is an epic screenshot, isn't it? Click. <laughs> wow, crazy. We got some good lines going on now. Oh wait, I was just in a 5 mode. No free camera. Yeah, really clean lines now. That is looking good. Especially, you know, main way to approach this probably will come flying in and then you want to have this interesting structure. That's really cool. You're going to have a huge courtyard in front here, extend uh, over the perimeter here a little bit towards inside the perimeter and um, yeah we gotta spawn proof that then of course but that should look really really cool let's have a look from on top it's interesting how how the shape changes so when you look from in front it it's almost like pyramidal right and and yeah interesting shapes a lot of things going on and then from on top becomes way more narrow <laughs> it looks really cool when you zoom down there so now 
Our next task is to flat, uh, fill in these areas here. And here is where we're gonna bring our organic feel into it. So I gotta gather a bunch of dirt, I gotta look over at spawn, I have a lot of resources there left. We do transport some over, get some moss in place, some rooted dirt and stuff, and try to mellow out yeah, all these individual um, yeah, quadrants here and to create some sort of roof, organic style, at least lay the foundation for that. It really feels good to do some chill building after such a mad grind. That's why I love Minecraft, you know, the variety. You can go hard and, or go home, you know, <laughs> do a crazy digging project or like world eatering or some other crazy stuff you can do in the game. Or you can just express your creativity. And I love um, expressing my creativity, especially, you know, working with friends. Ah, yeah, I was looking for some items I dropped. <laughs> it boxes off again. Um, yeah, and with Jeromos, you know, we have our nightly build sessions where we hang out. Jeromos is a long time member uh, of my Patreon community, but by now, over the years, you know, we know each other for a long time, became a friend as well. And it's just uh, joyful to hang out, talk about daily life a little bit, and, you know, come up with cool designs. And yeah, this is the Hall of Goats entry. This is our entry hall. We need to carve in some, some entrances here and there. I'll get to that in a second. But, um, you know, we stay in our theme and the idea is now, um, yeah, if you look at it from top, from on top, right, it almost looks like this was a mountain once, a nat natural mountain. And then somebody came in with a giant stencil and just punched it out. Uh, but there's still some parts of the mountain <laughs> in there, like some giant cookie cutter or something, you know. <laughs> and, you know, we have these extreme precise and straight lines that represents one side of me, you know, the engineering part in a sense. And um, then we have nature coming in, breaking the symmetry a little bit. And you also can see there are small asymmetry, asymmetrical uh, things in there. For example, the pillars are not all placed in the same locations and so on. So we're slowly starting to also bring in some nature, some joyfulness, some life into the whole thing. And nature is breaking it up a little bit, um, you know, this extreme order and precision. And that is the whole theme we had going on over at Shopping or Starter Town pr pretty much. And now we transfer it here to the base as well. Um, Jeromos and I are experimenting with a lot of themes and um, yeah, we thought, you know, through to the gold motto, grind, optimize, automate together, and we should try something new and really get you guys more involved. Uh, so what I will do now, I will continue building here for a little while. I want to do the entrances and I want to decorate some of the uh, areas of our nature theme and maybe work on our uh, square in front a little bit, an area in front. And then I will leave it, you know, unfinished. And then we will create a world download or a lightmatic schematic. Um, and then you can pull this thing and then, um, you know, add your own interpretation to it. I will help you, guide you along with certain style elements I will ha want to have. I'll put that in there. And then maybe, you know, we can do a huge brainstorming session that way together and perfect the design. Uh, true to our spirit. Um, best thing would be, I guess, you know, if I offer the world download, you just uh, tweet it at me, hashtag Hall of Goats. Hall of Goat, right? And um, then, you know, take some screenshots of some angles or maybe do a short clip also and then tweet that at me with that hashtag. 
And then, you know, next episode, we can go through some of the suggestions and maybe implement some of your ideas. Um, and I think that would be a cool way, you know, to increase viewer interaction and do something really together, aside of you always being there and supporting and watching, which is, of course, amazing. But uh, it would be cool to yeah, l yeah let you guys in even a little bit more. And uh, maybe for some of you, um, it would be a cool... Yeah, cool, cool experience if uh, one of your design ideas directly makes it onto the Hermitcraft server. And I thought that would be really, really cool. Kind of the way we do with the fan artists, you know, there's also a lot of people, whoop, <laughs> Random was slain by Pufferfish, that have great build su su suggestions. And I think, <laughs> tactical, yeah. And I think uh, this way, um, you know, I can get you guys the more building inspired people involved a little bit and we can do that here and there maybe get you guys direct feedback like that so yeah let me know what you think about the idea and yeah check out the link in the video description you should be able to download a world or a schematic maybe both i'll check uh, what makes more sen sense i think for most people the easiest is uh, just simply a world uh, download so yeah now let's get going and do some naturization i gathered a whole lot of materials the morning already Yeah, that flows nicely. <laughs> Man. All right, so we got one side done now with the door and let's check it out. And also I naturized the area up there. Um, there's a bee. We will populate the place again. I haven't given up the hope of, of bees. They might start vanishing again, but then we just put a bee farm somewhere in the basement and <laughs> make sure we refill. But yeah, that's of course our theme. We know a little bit from, you know, starter town. Right, you can see we picked up the same elements and it's a bit chaotic and that's what I wanted with it. The in-between areas between the crazy order are chaotic. We have a few solar panels again, you know, here and there, bees buzzing, a few rocks, stone, bushes. Um, pretty much uh, the idea is, you know, I would put some grass areas there and maybe randomly toss out some seeds and then uh, let things grow. And we have these small uh, individual solar panels that run individual small things inside the base, kind of, you know, thinking about it from a lore perspective. And then, of course, we need to keep the lines going with our entrance ways here. And I think we accomplished that. With this, we will have two. Obviously, here one and another one right there. And then I also want to extend uh, in the front a little bit and start working on our landing platform slash square or yard a little bit too. But yeah, that's the direction we're headed. And yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to see your feedback and maybe also your active yeah, feedback by participating in the map download thing, right? I added some more things, but before we look at those in detail, we gotta make our way to spawn and I grabbed half a stack of our insane diamond supply. So now you guys might be saying, but dog, last time you asked us in the comments how many diamonds did we get and we all wanna know. Well, yeah, of course, but we gotta play it smart, man. If I would reveal right now how many diamonds I exactly have, the other diamond, you know, stack competitors could easily just, you know, go on a secret mining session and boom, beat us instantly. What we want to do is we want to give them a feeling that they can win, but in reality we can strike any time. And then I also have a secret plan for another joker we got to have in the backhand and uh, that should seal the deal. <laughs> they poked the bear now. On the other side, there's still cub, but well... What? Oh my god! With the 32 random distance! Is this scary? No. Wait, what? <laughs> Zuma mentioned something he was building a go to. No man, that's scary! What? 
Oh my god, this is <laughs> that's actually hilarious. Are you serious? Yeah, you know, I flew around and some more chunks are stored, so now we can even see further. But <laughs> I was like, what? Huh? What is looking at us from back there? Hello, Gary. <laughs> Maybe Gary's sad, you know, <laughs> because the game is over. Oh my god, really? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. There I can see the donut now. Yeah, I went there before. Look for Joe's um axolotl shop but couldn't find it. So I rescued a few out of the walls of the perimeter. <laughs> uh, so yeah. When I bombed up their their natural habitat I felt uh, we gotta take them in. But anyways, um so two oh four it was and now we are just gonna flex and be like we made our we made our tower crooked a bit. We don't care. So we're gonna add half a stack here. It should give us a few more blocks of height. And then, you know, we give them a chance to catch up and they be like, haha, that's not that far. And then we strike. We have way more where this is coming from. But they don't know how much exactly. You know, you never know where this is going. You know, somebody could just start building a second pillar and just say, well, you know, you know what I mean? We gotta be prepared. <laughs> we gotta be prepared. Oh man, <laughs> this is epic. You know, that gives you a real idea how things are actually positioned here on the server. What is this, actually? And what is that? There's a small little cave entrance. Are there more shops opening? We need to, we need to have a quick look, guys. I haven't been here. And um, it's nice to see this expansion going on around the shopping district, kind of naturally branching out. We might be, maybe had plans to build in the donut a mountain structure here before, but then we said, ah, let's just, you know, free reign, free range expansion. Let's see what happens. And uh, this, is, this seems to be the way we're going. We have a rough idea. Wow, let's, is this opened already? So this is side door. Maybe they should make more clear where where the entry is, but uh, this whole build is pretty pretty epic. Like, yeah, yeah. I guess it's not accessible yet. It needs to be stocked first by Ren, and then they ha probably have a great a great opening. Here are the locks on this conveyor belt, right? Really cool. Why? Let's check this out real quick. What is happening here? Beacon, one beacon block per diamond. Oh, okay. Some lamps though. Oh, I like this staircase leading up. There's probably more things gonna be. Nice building style. Is this stuff here to be sold? Or is it oh, yeah, yeah, it is. So there might be multiple items here then. Alright. This gives me some Aquay Town vibes, style wise, you know what I mean? Pretty cool. Maybe it's by Impulse or Tango. Oh yeah, this seems to be an eye. Pretty cool. What's over here? It's also not a new shop. Bulk deal. 16 diamonds for the whole box. Ooh, yes. Oh, yeah. That is Gems Shop, most likely. Oh, cool. Yes. Okay. This is good stuff. We definitely might want to use that in our color palette too. For sure the lights are awesome. Ah, okay. So that's her little little shop here. Yeah, she's been working together with False Symmetry. You know, Guardian Farm. And I think they have an Ink Farm by now already. Or maybe a Wither Rose Farm. At least some way to get uh, Black Dye. Pretty cool. Okay. Anyways, we are definitely high on our... Did this grow now? No, it's the same size, right? It's still 204. It's always so hard to gauge height. Wait, let's double check. 204 still, okay. And we are at... We should be... We were at 204. It should be 8 blocks higher, so... Whoop! Oh, man. It's a bit choppy here with the, with the uh, long render distance. I don't know if you see it in the video. Sometimes the video rendering oh, polishes stuff out, but it's even a bit hard for me to land on here. So yeah, this 32 render distance thing, we can do it here and there, but I don't want to always play with it. 
It definitely gives you some motion sickness over time. All right, so let's check it. Yes, 212, as expected. All right, that puts us in the lead, despite the bend. <laughs> Slight curve can't deter us. All right, good. Now let's head back to the perimeter, and I want to show you what I've been working on, right? So in the meantime, we can already think about uh, some strategies, um, you know, um, for this diamond war. My plan is, but I don't know if I should reveal it. It's dangerous. But I have a plan, you know, to come up with a secret win, win from behind. But it's not the most, you know, super secret idea. Other hermits might have it too, you know. So uh, if you have a good plan how we could deter, I mean, we could race to this, you know, right away. But where's the fun in that? We got so many diamonds. We want to we wanna have some fun with them. Anyways, talking about having some fun. I got carried away here a little bit, having some fun building. So first of all, our two entrances. Hey, is our bee still there? Nice. This one seems to be it's kicking about. So, here uh, we have these two entrances on both sides coming into here. And then, um, yeah, same here, right? And we stayed in the same angle as the whole building is, pretty much. Right here, these lines, and uh, they are repeated here in the door lines. That is important uh, to keep this order. And I think that's really cool to have this double door. Maybe I'll put some some um, doors here, some automatic systems pushing up from below, so you could close if you want to. But generally, you know, as your main entrance to your base, you don't want to have uh, annoying doors all the time. Otherwise, you might end up not using it too much. That's uh, you know, a bit of a problem with over-engineering. <laughs> Not that I ever do that. <laughs> Not at all. Right, and then you would come in here and then enter the Hall of Goat. And then uh, we will expand the room or uh, the hall towards back here. Eventually this will probably lead to storage room area. That's how it looks from the back side at the moment. But probably this room will be expanded more in a square shape uh, this way then. And um, I want to be able to walk in the Hall of Goats and to the left and to the right so we want to have goat statues that will be on 5x5 five five roughly pedestals and then be 12 blocks high. So if you have cool design ideas for statues, copper can be implemented there for sure um, that are standing and flanking us. You know, think about old Egyptian temples, right, where they have the gods and the pharaohs sitting lined up on these chairs, for example, or standing, you know, something like that I envisioned. And Jerome said maybe we can ask the community as well if they have some good design ideas. Because it's not trivial to build a, a small statue that looks cool, you know, and maybe it looks like a goat head thing. <laughs> like a goat standing man with a goat head, something like that, Egyptian. Think about e Egypt, right? <laughs> yeah, so maybe 12-ish blocks high, I would assume something like that. We measured around a little bit, um, but yeah, if it's a different dimension also not bad and then yeah of course here in the middle right here is our nature and then we have another little pond here and from the pond of course you know we're pulling some water into my tomato plantation which i have to tell you about in real life it's gonna be sick this year because my, my neighbor, you know, upstairs and I, we share the garden and we like to, you know, combine our forces and like, you know, true goat style, working together and, uh, you know, getting nice tomato plants. And at the moment, um, we have over 60 tomato plants ready to be planted, all kind of, of different strains. And that's kind of represented here as well, right? We got big fleshy tomatoes and small, um, you know, cherry tomatoes and all kinds of different uh, things here, tomato-ish, and these are some growing, sitting up in the sun, you know, getting some sunshine here, and then we have our fresh water line coming in here, you know, maybe you're clipping around, preparing something to be planted into the big um, raised beds here, you know, you know, you know, you feel me? I mean, there's some, some serious tomato action going on here, and I thought this would be cool to put that here into the corner. And I started with the, the floor design here a little bit, 
at least up to here maybe we transition into something more polished on the inside we will see but outside here i wanted to have it naturey and maybe a bit rocky maybe we threw some throw some buttons down here and there as decoration and in case we have a door or emergency door system or something along those lines right we could still use one of the buttons hidden here as a nice little trigger which would would be cool and yeah here is my nice little pond um, you know, I always dream of having a pond, my neighbors have a pond and so on, but you know, in reality a pond is cool, but it's just gonna be a ton of frogs in there that are always loud in the night and it's gonna be a mosquito heaven. So actually having a pond in your garden is not the greatest. Maybe if you put a lot of fish in there. Anyways, we gotta put axolotls in. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Free the axolotls. I grabbed them. Wait. Why is it two yellow ones now? Pretty sure it was a uh, of different color. Interesting. I grabbed them from over there from the lush cave right there and they spawned in there and yeah, we're going to keep them here. I think if you bucketed them once now they're not going to vanish anymore. So hopefully they fixed the pathfinding issues of them in 1.18.2 because um you know, I heard or knew uh, yeah, they, they constantly were dying and uh, suffocating on land or something. But those guys seem to be fine. They try to jump back into the water and do their thing. It's kind of cool, you know, we want to bring some nature in here. And actually now I like it that it's two yellow ones. Although I was really sure when I caught them, the other one was purple. Hmm. Well, let's see if they stick around and stay here. <laughs> if not, well, so be it cause of nature I guess <laughs> and yeah with that said it's also the course of YouTube that at some point an episode needs to end <laughs> not every episode can be a one hour long movie <laughs> yeah. yeah so uh, I hope um, you liked uh, how we started our base here just to give you a little bit of a look ahead right we're gonna have different uh, floors going on here and the floors are gonna be open to the front and we will see things going on in here. I spotted something interesting right here. Look at that. There is three geodes relatively close to each other. Not the biggest of geodes, but still. It's three of them. This one is pretty good one. Yeah. So those we could probably also hook up because we will spend a lot of time here maybe we put some piston designs in there although I'm dreading it a little bit because there's nothing more annoying than making <laughs> yeah a farm for those bad boys because yeah it's uh, just tedious and there's never a good way to do it a perfect way better say so yeah maybe we integrate that too and then we have different farms and setups going on we need a super smelter if we ever want to tackle right putting all the glass in here well we got to smelt it man so we, we really would need a super smelter we would need a tree farm we need to work on the shulker farm and at the moment talking about the shulker farm i thought you know um i mentioned it by the way while we fly over there uh, last episode um some people guessed it correctly over there on the other side on the eastern side where the sun rises in the morning i wanted to create a giant tree as a kickback and um, yeah some people guessed the name already yeah so in envision this gigantic tree sitting over there with copper inlays and acacia wood grayish bark you know shimmering epically man huge crown maybe made out of emerald or something um, emerald mixed in man you know this place is just inspiring there's another geode so yeah and then um, some small facts I wanted to give you about the perimeter too right um, in total we used about 1.5 million TNT explosions to blast out everything here <laughs> blasted out about 40 million blocks which is an insane number to think about and um, yeah I only died once during the whole thing and that was to a creeper that was lurking while I was digging some obsidian in a cave uh, preemptively and he snuck up and blew up and that actually killed me the world eater never killed me <laughs> uh, Joe died once <coughs> helping here but also not by the world eater just you know flying around and then he spotted diamonds and went down a bit too quickly like that and crashed right into the ground <laughs> So I guess technically, you know, the world either claimed two deaths 
and then of course green falling into the hole but i think he survived that so then of course there is the question people saying what are you gonna do with the world eater are you gonna leave it here and uh, you know as some reminiscence and a reminder of the epic project um, not sure might rip it out just because of the sheer amount of resources that are hanging in there man the pistons alone would really like to get them back and use them for something else right and then in the end we're gonna have three walls covered uh, epic pixel art uh, art artwork here here this uh, side up to here <coughs> right and then there will be the the layers exposed uh, of our floors and farms and machines and transitioning into the outskirts will be also polished walls and you know created and transition into whatever we got going on here maybe it's also the same design going all the way around but this side over there i will definitely want to leave open and <coughs> maybe put a huge glass front in front of it or even leave it exposed like that um, to give us a nice view into the world um, because I think this side is maybe the best because it has the geode nicely cut in half and I think it would look nice and you know on the ap opposite to our base there and yeah that's it I would say for today I hope you enjoyed the episode built heavy a bit more relaxing but you know as i told you in the beginning after episode right it's important um, you can easily burn out in minecraft even if you have a ton of fun with it um, just uh, because you're doing too much <laughs> so you gotta relax and enjoy so i hope you can then also enjoy a little bit by yeah, working on the setup here the hall of goat and um, I'm really looking forward to see your feedback and design ideas and hoping um, we can implement a lot of that. Until that, see you next time. Bye guys!